So instead of having so much frustration of, oh, when is this season going to be over? What am I supposed to be doing? What's happening? Nothing's happening, God. Like, pause the brakes, take the frustration down, and really see this as an opportunity to grow, as an opportunity to learn. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we are all about creating life you love. So that being said, we're going to hop into today's video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the struggle between our plans and what God has planned for our life. And I know you guys may resonate with this, but have you ever found yourself kind of just like trying to control every little single aspect of your life? Like, all right, when I turn 24, I'm getting married. By the time I'm 28, I'm gonna have a few kids. By the time I'm 30, my life is gonna look like this. I'm gonna go to school for this, and my life is gonna pan out this kind of way based on me going to school for X, Y, and Z. But what happens when life just starts throwing you curveballs, doors are closing, and God pretty much says, yeah, no. Like, how do you navigate that frustration between what you want for your life versus what's God's will for your life. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the beauty of surrendering to God's will. And it is truly a beautiful experience if you embrace it. It can be scary. I know y'all seen that, that picture of like, when the little boy is on a roller coaster with the mom and it's like the Holy Spirit and then it's like the boy. But like, that's how this ride is about to go. So I'm gonna take you guys through a few things that can help you see the beauty in surrendering to God's word. Okay, first things first. Just because God says no does not mean it's like a hard no. It could just be a no, not right now, sis. You got some other things that you need to work on. So I want to um, read you guys the scripture. It is Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declared the Lord. As the heavens are higher than earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. So basically he's like, yeah, I'm up here and you know, you're here. And the thing is like, God may have something way more even grand than what we are trying to do for our life. Like we may see, oh yeah, this person is a millionaire. Let me do it this way. But God is like, yeah, but I could have made you a billionaire in way less steps and way less trying to work things out and figure things out yourself. So just pause a little bit before you be hopping and making different decisions. And I could just say for me, a personal example is a few months ago, I had this spirit of, oh, I need to quit my job. <laughs> I know y'all see so many people on the internet like saying, oh, I quit my job and now I make six figures a month. I quit my job and this happened. Or, oh, I quit my job and now I have freedom. Oh, I quit my job and now I can work for my laptop in Bali. Oh, I'm working poolside, like, this is what you can do when you work for yourself. So I'm like, I was seeing all this and all of this looks enticing. I mean, granted, we are in a world where inflation is crazy right now. So like, of course, who doesn't want more money? Like who doesn't, who doesn't want more freedom? Like, I feel like throughout the pandemic that showed us like we need to value our time a little bit differently. So this train of people having that true freedom, it's attractive, why not? Like, why wouldn't we want that? So for me, I had to, call myself to God and be like, yeah, what you want me to do? Because I can't keep crying and complaining about it because this is my life, this is my livelihood, this is how I make my money. So I went on a seven day liquid fast because I needed answers and I need to hear him loud and clearly. And sometimes that is the answer. You have to fast to hear him. You have to really like straight up deny your flesh. Like, so I went on the liquid fast that was literally no solid foods. I did have soup for dinner. But other than that, I was just having like fresh, fresh juices, water, coffee, that kind of thing. And throughout this process, I, he told me, no, you cannot quit your job. This is not the time for you to quit your job, for one. Um, I still have some things that I need you to work on, for two. Do you think you're even ready to just up and quit your job and do all these extra things and do all this hustle and bustle? Do you think that you're ready for that? And the answer is, no, I'm not because your girl is a little bit lazy. I'm not even going to hold you up. The fact that I work a job that is not hard for me and I make six figures plus a fat bonus every two weeks, like I'm getting my paycheck every two weeks and it doesn't matter if I have to do a whole bunch of work this week and a little bit of work this week. Either way, what I do each week, I'm getting paid the same amount of money. Versus if you're like full-blown entrepreneurship, it's like, 
you gotta hustle and bustle for that money unless you have like you know sources of passive income now people do have sources of passive income but like to even get that started you gotta do a little bit of hustling and bustling so he's like are you ready for that and i'm like yeah i, don't, I really don't know so i am not looking at god's rejection and saying no i'm looking at it and saying like hold on sis work on these flaws and other things that you have going on right now because you need to grow you need to understand that my timing is a better timing than what you think is best for your life so go ahead and just kind of listen to me right now so i want to encourage you all to really understand his timing instead of verse instead of going on like what society is telling you society is like you need this money you need it now you need this freedom you need it now you need this bins you need it now you need this mansion you need it now like God is a restorer of time and things so like don't have that that FOMO of that fear of missing out on getting all this stuff immediately because God is a restorer and he can give you that plus more in the right time. Two, a season of pruning. So a season of pruning is a season where you really have to grow and like learn stuff. So like I mentioned before, he told me like you still have some things that you need to work on right now so there is a scripture in the bible um that i saw during my time of fasting and it's john 15 verses 1 and 2 it says i am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful so while God is literally shaping you and taking the things out that aren't bearing any fruit, he's keeping the things that are strong in you to make them better so you can produce better things. So take that as a season of, oh, he's molding me and he's shaping me into the person that I need to be. So instead of having so much frustration of, oh, when is this season going to be over? What am I supposed to be doing? What's happening? Nothing's happening, God. Like, all the break. Take the frustration down and really see this as an opportunity to grow, as an opportunity to learn. And instead of being so mad, just simply ask like, you know, God, I'm frustrated. I'm tired of waiting. Can you help me know what I'm supposed to be learning in this season so I can take advantage and be grateful for this season? And I feel like that's a way where you can kind of start to even have that open communication, like ask him, what am I supposed to be learning? Because you walking around being pissed and irritated, it's not helping you and it's not making time go by any faster. So just ask them. Three, so hustle culture versus his divine timing. And I'm going to read to you guys Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3.1. And it says, there's a time for everything and a season for everything under the heavens. So pretty much this is a time and a place for everything, y'all. And... When we think about like hustle culture, everything is like instant gratification. Like I need this, I need it now. Do this formula and you will become a millionaire within the next two months. Like it's that instant gratification. We see everybody taking off, blowing up. And that's the thing with like social media. I think it exposes a little bit too much. I think it is a great way for us to like stay connected. But I just don't think we were meant to see people's lives in the way that we do because obviously people are only showing you the good stuff and you see like oh my god this person quit their job and they are living the life but like everybody has their own destined timing own destined path and when you try to get ahead of god and make your own way we'll say you can make your life unnecessarily hard like because you're simply just not listening you're like i'm gonna do this my own way you taking too long and even if you don't have any hiccups in the beginning it can lead you down a path to where you can lose everything just as fast as you got it and i say this because if you skip out on that season of development that season of pruning that season of learning and growing you could be missing a vital lesson that you need to know in your season of being up here so say 
oh, um, you didn't learn your time management skills. You didn't learn your money skills. So you not having good money skills and time management skills can make everything like literally fall apart and you lose everything. So why not learn the lessons that you need to learn? And then that way, I feel like your ride can be way more smoother. And then when you're trying to do things in your own hand, it's a, like a lot of trial and error. Like, oh, let me buy this course. Let me read this book. Let me do this. Let me do that. Instead of listening to God and letting him ordain your steps. And then he's going to set you up. He's going to put you in the right places at the right time in front of the right people. You can even come to an opportunity where you're just talking to somebody at Starbucks, talking to somebody getting your hair done. Like, oh, yeah, I do this, this and that. And they put you on. Like, it's no reason for you to, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, it's so easy for us to look at other people's lives and compare and say, oh, I want that. But is that what God wants for you in this season right now? Okay, so last thing is finding peace in the surrendering. And I can say this part can be like, you got to get your patience up. I'm not even going to hold you up. But the way you do this is simply by just getting more close with God. And I'm going to give you four practical tips that can help you kind of like grow your relationship and stay connected. So first tip is to spend time in his word. And when I say spend time in his word, get in this Bible. So this Bible I have is the Women's Study Bible. It's an NIV version. Got it off Amazon for like 30 bucks or 40 bucks or something. But get in the Bible, read things, read it, make sure you understand it. I have a study Bible. There ha there are lots of like backstories, um, maps, and just different kind of understandings already within like the text so you can understand it better. So get you a Bible that you can understand. Don't be reading those old school Bibles. Get you something a little new that's easier to, you know, comprehend. What you want to do is to get into your prayer life. I feel like it's so easy to just be like, oh God, I want this, God, I want that. But really learn to have that dialogue with him. Pray and wait for him to talk back to you. And the thing is, you really have to learn how to cast those worries, cast those insecurities like onto him. And something that I recently did was I created a prayer board and I'm gonna insert a picture here. And I also have a video of me making it, so I'll link that above in the cards. But what I've done with this prayer board, I'm able to actually write the things down that I'm looking for God to answer. If I'm looking to cast off those insecurities, those worries, like, oh, I need money, or, oh, I need more time, or, oh, I need this, put them in an envelope, pray over them. And then once God begins to answer those prayers, you can take them out and put them into the answer prayer list. And the thing is like, you are literally living in an answer prayer right now. Like I remember praying to be in Texas, praying to be in this job, praying to be in this beautiful apartment. And it's like, you have to stop and smell the roses sometimes. So it's like, don't, I would say pray and don't really think about the how. Like it's not your business to figure out the how. It is up to God to ordain those steps for you. So you trying to figure out and work backwards and figure it out. It's just, it's just stressing you out. Don't do that. Third thing would be to seek wise counsel in I would say it's easier like if you have like a good church around you um at my church they have life groups small groups they have a young adults ministry marriage ministry singles ministry man church women church like it's literally some place for everybody to be and so you don't have to walk alone and you're around like-minded people to where you can get you know advice and what you should do or people who will literally rally around you pray with you intercess so I indeed have a little bit of a brain fart there. The word intercess. is intercede. Inter I think that's the word. Intercess on your behalf. So be praying on your behalf. So like those are the kind of people you want to be around in these seasons of your life. Just in general, you want to be around them. And then the last thing, but probably the most important thing is learning to fast. And fasting can be tricky. And I also feel like the moment you say you're going to fast, it becomes super hard. Like that's the moment where you're just like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. Oh my God, I'm itching for social media. And it's like, sometimes you literally have to sit down and be like, God, I'm not moving until you tell me an answer because I need to hear you. But sometimes we have to really quiet the noise to hear him. And that can look like starving yourself. And not necessarily starving yourself, but starving your flesh that fleshly desire to just eat and eat and eat. Because sometimes we eat just to kind of cope with the feelings. So pause the eating, pause the social media, pause things that are taking time away from God because that's all he wants. He wants to hear from you. He wants to see you. But I just feel like sometimes when you really need an answer or you really need to hear from him and he feels far away, 
Pause your life fast and pray and really just tap in with him and see what he has to say. Like I said, I did the seven day liquid fast. I got the answer before seven days, y'all. But I still dedicated those seven days because that's what I said I was going to do. And it could be like, if you already know, like by day three, like, oh, he said this, like, why continue the fast? But like, if I made that vow to him and to myself that I was gonna go to the seven days, that's what I did. But it would get tricky, like, I'm living with my fiance. I have to cook for him. I have to go to the grocery store. I have to make sure there's snacks and stuff in the house. Like that was the true hardest part during that time was to be like, oh my God, I'm around all this food. But like if I was here by myself, y'all, it wouldn't bother me because I wouldn't have nothing in this house. I literally would not have anything in this house. But because I have other people around me, I had to be in these environments. So I had to learn to pray through those situations. Like I remember one time I was in the grocery store and I was literally praying like, man does not live by bread alone, but every word of the living God, because I was literally in the grocery store starving. And like every time I was getting hungry, I would just repeat that, um, repeat that um, scripture like over and over. And I would just meditate on it because it's like, he is going to feed me regardless. Like I don't have to worry about all of that stuff. Just meditate on his word and get close with him and yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this faith talk this is something like totally different here on my channel but if you guys would like to hear more let me know down below and share this with a friend and don't forget to like comment and subscribe